everyone. This is Ashley Tucker from My Favorite Things, and today I have another really awesome Halloween card to share with you. I absolutely love the stamps that came out in this release. I really like to make Halloween cards, so when I saw this Boo Crew stamp set, I was really excited to make a card with it. I know that Halloween cards aren't for everyone, but I absolutely love them. And when I first started making cards, I wasn't really into Halloween cards because my thought process was, why do I need to make a Halloween card for someone? It doesn't seem like an occasion that you'd give somebody a card, but they are so fun to make. And I don't think you really need an occasion to give someone a card. So if you like Halloween and a friend of yours likes Halloween, why not send them a Halloween card? I'm definitely a Halloween card convert now. I make them every year, and I think that they're a blast. Anyway, these four stamps come from the Boo Crew stamp set. I stamped them with my Misty tool using some Copic-friendly black ink, and I stamped them onto some Nina Solar White cardstock. I started by coloring in the little Frankenstein boy's skin with some green colors. I really wanted him to look like a classic Frankenstein, but still really cute. So what I did is I went on Pinterest and I searched Frankenstein cartoon and a lot of images came up and I kind of used those as a guide for my coloring. I do this kind of thing a lot when I'm trying to pick out colors for my images. Uh, for example, if I had an image of a dog and I couldn't come up with any colors for it, I might go on Google Image Search or on Pinterest and look up dogs and pick one that I really like and try to kind of follow those colors. So the biggest reason that I looked for those images of Frankenstein is because I couldn't decide what color to do his shirt. And when I looked up all of those images, almost all of them were wearing a purple shirt. So that's what I went with. Once that was decided, it kind of decided a lot of the rest of my card because once I had the purple on Frankenstein, I knew that I wanted to kind of add purple throughout the rest of the images. And that's because when I have a bunch of images like this, I usually try to make them kind of go together and be more cohesive with their colors. This, of course, is a personal choice, and you definitely don't have to do it. You don't have to color your images all matchy-matchy to have a really good card, and I don't always do that, but I do tend to do it more often than not. Now, when it comes to the Dracula, I did use Pinterest, and I searched for Dracula cartoon, but literally every single Dracula that I got had a red cape and a black outfit. I think that is just the classic colors for Dracula. At this point, I knew that I did not want my Dracula to have a red cape because I had kind of figured out the color combination that I was going to use for my entire card, and red was not part of it. And if I had him have that red cape, I thought it was going to kind of pop out a little bit too much and look too different from the rest of the card. I decided that I would make his cape black, so when I made that decision, I knew that I couldn't make the rest of his outfit completely black because it would all kind of blend together, so I made his shirt purple. He's definitely not your classic Dracula, but that's totally okay. My witch is definitely not your classic witch either. When it was time to color in the skin on my vampire, I knew that I wanted it to be really light because he's Dracula, but I also thought it might be fun to give it this blue tinge. I went around the edges with B00, and then I took BG70, which is the lightest color that I have in the blue family, and I blended out all of that blue. Of course, I had to give all of these cute little characters some pink rosy cheeks. Check out this adorable little witch character. She reminds me of Hermione Granger with her wavy hair, so I decided to color it a really light brown. She's probably my favorite out of all of these stamps, and that's probably because she's a witch and I tend to really like witch stamps. She's just such a cutie. I finished coloring in the little broom and then I was all done with all of this coloring. I know it was quite a bit of coloring. Once the coloring was done, I grabbed the coordinating dies and I taped them down on top of each image and I ran that through my die cutting machine. 
For my background, I'm going to be blending a few colors of Distress Oxide ink onto a panel of Bristol Smooth cardstock. The reason that I decided to use Bristol Smooth paper is just because I find it really easy to blend Distress Oxide ink on this paper. I will be making a slimline card today, so this panel is cut to be 8.5 by 3.5. I am going to be trimming it down a little bit after I do the blending so that I can have a border around my card in the end. I'm using one of my favorite color combinations for this card, which is this really muted orange color and this really nice violet purple. I grabbed the colors Dried Marigold and Wilted Violet because I thought that those matched the colors that I was really looking for, but when you blend together orange and purple, you tend to get brown, so I needed a color that was kind of in between the two in order to blend them together. Once I was happy with the blending, I pulled out this water bottle and removed the cap, and then I used the straw on the cap to tap some water droplets onto the panel, and then I let those water droplets sit for a little while, and then I soaked them up with a paper towel. I let this panel dry for quite a while because I'm going to be doing some embossing. I went over the paper with my powder tool and then I stamped some stars from the same Boo Crew stamp set using some Versamark embossing ink. Normally if I was going to emboss something on a panel of cardstock which I blended Distress Oxide inks on, I would test it with my embossing powder before stamping and make sure that none of the powder stuck to it. But because this background is going to be kind of a starry sky and I'm using a clear sparkly embossing powder, I didn't mind if I had a little bit of that powder stick to areas where I didn't stamp. So I sprinkled my embossing powder over the stars and then I heated it up with my heat tool. I took out a piece of black cardstock, which is cut to be the same size as my background panel. That panel, by the way, has been cut down to eight by three at this point. And then I took my scissors and I freehand cut this curvy hill shape along the top. I added some liquid adhesive along the top edge of that panel and then I adhered it to the bottom edge of my background. After gluing this down, I did use my paper trimmer in order to cut off the excess black paper that's hanging off of the edge. I used foam tape to pop up this panel onto a slimline card base. This card base is cut to be 3.5 by 8.5 inches. By the way, My Favorite Things just came out with some really awesome slimline dies in this latest release. I have not gotten my hands on them yet, but I'm definitely going to grab them because they come with some really awesome options for your slimline cards. They even came out with some dies to make grass, which spans across the entire front of a slimline card. Anyway, I took those little characters that I cut out earlier and I arranged them on the front of the card and glued them all down with some liquid adhesive. I picked out a sentiment from the same stamp set and I stamped it with embossing ink onto some black cardstock and then I embossed it with a white embossing powder, cut it down into this strip and I'm going to pop that up on my card with some foam tape. I think that with this group of cute little characters and this sentiment, this card would be perfect for inviting someone to a Halloween get together. I really like to invite a group of friends over for Halloween to play board games. So a card like this would be really perfect for sending out that invite. I thought that this card needed some details on the sides of the card, so I took out this tree die, which comes from the Haunted House die set, and I cut two of those out of some black cardstock, and I just kind of cut them so that they fit along the side of the hill, and then I glued them down with some liquid adhesive. They were kind of a last minute decision, so they probably could have been put on the card in a cleaner way had I done it earlier, but because I thought of them at the end, this is the way that I decided to put them on. To finish the card, I first took a white gel pen and I added highlights and details to the characters, and then I took a glitter brush and I went over the sentiment. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you really enjoyed this card design and that it gave you some inspiration.
If you've never tried to make a Halloween card in the past, I challenge you to try to make one this year and send one to a friend. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.